I think the first paid job I got after graduating from Toy Picardie was a, 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 a commercial, but the strip was the first, with, like with a script, and I had to go in for costume fitting, and, um, and it was the second series of the strip, so I knew about the show, I'd sort of seen the show, and that was made in Wellington, where I lived at the time, so it was very much, the people in Wellington were very kind of proud of the strip, because it was a local, um, yes, yeah, so it was great, so there I was with, um, it was Luann Gordon and Robbie Mangasiva and Craig Hall, who of course has gone on to do many wonderful things, he was in it. Uh, Mike Edward, who I know now, who's still, you know, accomplished actor. Uh, so it was great, but I was like, right, well this is how it works. There's, there's cameras and lights and, you know, it's... And there was a part that was cast kind of against my uh, type. This, uh, that character was a put-upon uh, doctor who was um, sort of struggling with having to deal with losing people or seeing death all around him in a hospital and he was sort of questioning his life and all this kind of stuff. But The Insider's Guide to Happiness is, is a production that I'm still fiercely proud of to this day and, it, and there's, it was just this kind of weird, weird little anomaly on the landscape of New Zealand television Drama. There wasn't anything like it before or since. They made a follow-up the, the, the year after, The Insider's Guide to Love, which wasn't the same. It, just, it was just a kind of a diluted version of, of the first one, in, in my opinion. But it, The Insider's Guide to Happiness holds up today. It's just it's so compelling to watch, and, it, and I think it, it had a strong element of the New Zealand cinema of unease that we're so well known for, and it's always been a feature of our, our screen productions over the years, that's just kind of weird, um, kind of a world all its own, that, that show. It just had this tone to it that wasn't like anything else, and that is, is really, really, um, to, to watch now, it still holds up. It could have, it could have been made last year. The music and, and the, um, the colour palette of it and the, just the tone of the performances and it was just great to do and I, and I felt at the time and still do very lucky to have been a part of it because I think it's a, a very strong e example of, 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 you know, of New Zealand screen uh, production. I had watched a lot of the first series and, and liked that it was a, like a, sh a show about these um, you know, wisty, lower socioeconomic, but you know, full of ambition and charm and humour. And like, I, re I really liked the show, and I thought the, the part was really cool. And um, it was a strange environment because an outrageous fortune, because it was shot out here. It was shot, it's shot in West Auckland, and they kind of just get lots of the uh, like the ex the background performers and the bit players and stuff are just kind of real life like <laughs> rough dude and I was the president of the gang I was the president of this they made up a fictional you know like motor, like a motorbike gang and so then I, I like I remember just sort of like the first time I showed up they were all the all the guys playing my gang they'd all bought their actual bikes like they I think they were cast partly because they all had Harleys and and I think when I the first night I showed up to shoot they were all just quite doing burnouts on their Harley, like in the car, to, like all showing off, and like I had to turn up, and and I was just this drama school, got like, <laughs> and I had to go out there, and you know, the first was like, oh, your gang's out there, go out and say hello, and these are actual like, I don't know, maybe gang members, <laughs> and I had to go out and go, what, well, I'm gonna be your boss, and I was, it was fun, it was a really fun job, and then and then I got to go back, they brought the character back for the following series, um, which was cool, which was another few, another few weeks. But of, but of course it's, but it was great to have been, been a part of that since it's just got, this, got a legacy and a, a fan base. And, uh, and again, it was, there were some amazing performers in that show. So you get cast in these shows and, then, and, it, and you just get to work with really good actors. I got to work with Frank Witten and Robin Malcolm and, um, uh, a bit with Grant Bowler, 
Ant Star, Claire Chittam, Siobhan and Antonio. Yeah, the Almighty Johnsons was, was just non-stop fun from beginning to end. For me, for that show, the, the Norse god powers were always just kind of heightened extensions of male characteristics anyway. Like one of them was good at sports and games, he'd always win bets and games, you know, one of them could char charm women to do whatever he wanted to just with, with his, you know, voice and his wit. And another one didn't age. Another one got upset and affected the environment around him when he lost his temper or... So they were just, I mean, they're all just very male qualities with the knobs turned up. And so for me, that was always just like the show about, about men. Those characteristics are just then underlined as supernatural powers. But, if, but for me, it was always just a show about these Kiwi blokes. Offspring was sort of quite different. It was like going in and just doing your job, just shooting the scenes and then you know, I just had to sort of, uh, it was like an, an, a, a very quick and an intense and passionate romantic relationship with this character, but it was very much just a, just a, a professional working environment. There was none of that hanging out together and all that sort of, the actors would all just kind of come in and do their bits and go their separate ways. So it was quite weird for me. I was, was, the show was shot in Melbourne, but I was in New Zealand more than I was there. I'd go to Melbourne for three, four nights at a time and just shoot all my scenes and then back to Auckland for a couple of weeks. Back to my life. And, you know, and then I'll right, and then over to Melbourne. It's like, right, we need you next Thursday. So I'd go back to Melbourne and back into Offspring World. And it was, quite, it was strange. It was a very fragmented kind of experience where it was only a little bit of me that was and off, you know, offspring involved for those four months. But all absolutely lovely. Offspring was great. They were, everybody was so welcoming to, um, Edu Drent was, uh, was in it too, which was cool. Another Kiwi and a, and a friend who was already, his character was already in the show when I came in, which made it a bit easier to, to just kind of slide into, into that environment. But yeah, it was great. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. It was much, much more challenging than I, than I expected, than I expected it to be. Learn, learning a new physical discipline uh, as, as a grown adult is really, really tough. I enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed being it thrown into this just completely foreign environment with these other, pe other people who felt exactly the same. And it was like we just part of a you know, like, we're the survivors of the plane crash. It's like, it's like right, oh, how are we going to survive this? It was cool, you know. We made firm friendships and it was great. It was a real, it was, it was just full on. When it finished, when, it, when my Dancing with the Stars journey finished, it was just like, what was that? What just happened? What just happened? It was really, really consuming. It was 24-7 half of my brain always on that week's routine. Really tough. I'd grown to have this kind of internal sort of badge of honour that I was like, that I was the one actor who'd never, who'd never been on Shorten Street, which was kind of bittersweet because lots of actors, they have literally played half a dozen different characters on Shorten Street over the years. And I'm like, why, why I can't even play one? Uh, but it was the right, I'm glad that it had just, it had, I'd gone so long, you know, we just sort of, Shorten Street and I were, just, were parallel lines for so many years and then finally it was worth the wait because the character's heaps and heaps of fun to play. I feel very privileged to have been cast in this, in this part, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of fun. This, this character is kind of a, a bad boy but, but certainly with a heart, with a very, with a genuine a heart and a, and a humanity, but, a, but definitely a, a playful, provocative, annoying um, kind of side as, as well, uh, which, is, which is cool. I've, and I've had some great storylines so far. And a, a good thing about Shortland Street is there's just so much 
happens to these characters so, so quickly in such a short space of time. There's just people dying and then, then, then there's affairs and then there's like some big accident and then it's like you've got to, or some, then someone go, has got to go into, you know, they, they go into disguise to spy on someone else and then that all backfires and turns into something and then there's other people from the past come back and it's, there's so much happens so quickly, which is, is great because it's, it's all, all these sort of monumental kind of events, which in a normal person's life, you know, they'd look back and go, oh, I remember when that happened, remember when, you know, Sean Street is like, right, well, that was just last week, but this week, this is happening. It's, so it's cool. 